Our next caller is Jake from Ohio. Hey, what's up, Jake? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, so I'll just get right into it. Um, I am a mixed martial artist. Um, that's a term pro here. Uh, I fight at 145, yet I walk around about 180 pounds. So it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big cut. Um, my only issue is, is so like during the, you know, off season, there's never off season, but when I'm not in fight camp, I'm always trying to build up muscle and get stronger because that is when I have lost before, I feel it's usually I'm getting, uh, uh, it's more on a physicality kind of standpoint. Um, so my question is, is, is how to gain, you know, you know, good strength without gaining too much weight. Um, which I know it's usually, you know, it's not about, it's not about the weight, but in my case, I have to make a certain weight. Um, and then once I do start fight camp, not to lose that muscle. So, um, we had this body scanner thing at this gym I have, or that I go to and my last fight camp from the day I started fight camp till, um, the day before weigh-ins, I lost nine pounds of muscle. Right. So that, that's where I'm kind of at right now. That's pretty, that's actually pretty common and typical in, in your situation for sure. Who would you guys say, uh, uh, George St. Pierre, uh, Conor McGregor, who's pretty good at, uh, at this as far as, maintaining their weight relatively close to their their fighting weight so this doesn't happen because this is very typical of a of a fighter who yep. puts on 20 30 sometimes 40 pounds in the off season and then when they go to cut for a show um they lose a significant amount of money but, but and by the way that's inevitable if the, if you if you put on that much weight uh in compared to what you fight at, uh, it's it would be impossible to lose 20, 30 pounds and not lose uh, some muscle along the way. Yeah, so the, the, the strategy is this. I, well, first off, Jake, wh how much of that weight are you cutting right before the fight? In other words, <clears throat> you know, I know there's a certain amount of weight that you're probably cutting through, you know, water manipulation and, and you know, using the sauna. So when you before you start doing that kind of a cut, which typically is done the day before or two days before, what is your weight at? So my goal, if it's going to be what I call an easy cut, there's no such thing as an easy cut. But um, if I can be 10 pounds above weight the week of the fight, so that Monday before the fight, I'm pretty happy. Okay. So then when we'll, we'll cut 10 pounds of water usually. Okay. Uh, sometimes it ends up being more, sometimes it's less. So the key to this is, so this is different for you than I, than I would be, uh, you know, this is different advice I'll give you than I would give someone else. The key, unless you, you want to move up in a weight class, the key is to stay as close to your fighting weight yeah. year round as possible. Now I know what we think is we could bulk up and then cut down and then end up with right. more muscle. But really what happens is that process of cutting is really how you'll start to feel uh, weaker if you're close to the weight, and I think you kind of already experienced that, like you said, if you can walk, if you could be a week out and be 10 pounds above, then you feel best. Your best bet is to not let your weight go up to 180 pounds um, at all. I, I wouldn't let my weight go up above 165 mm -hmm. pounds. You know, this is common with uh, bodybuilders too. Yes. So in the bodybuilding space, this is a common mistake uh, that I would see happen where guys in the off season, they put on so much weight trying to you know add add muscle every show and it's like and then they would cut and then they end up right back to where they started or maybe one pound of muscle more but they put on 30 pounds yep. in the off season to get there and it's like that's such a dramatic shift just for one pound of muscle they would have been far better off maintaining their body weight five ten pounds close to what their show weight is and the same thing i would i would say with like some fighters is they put on such an extreme amount of weight and it actually ends up uh, hurting them more than it ends up helping them. Yeah, totally. I, I would, I would stay cl as close to your fighting weight as you know, probably within f 15 to 20 pounds is what I would do <clears throat> right. before you start to get ready for your fight or decide to move up uh, in a weight class. Now, as far as training is concerned, you know, traditional resistance training, explosive movements, uh, compound lifts, that's all the same. If I if I were to advise you versus yeah. you know somebody who wants to gain muscle or gain weight, it would be the same. It's really a function of your nutrition. 
Now, there yeah. is one thing you can focus on that would that could improve the strength as it translates in the ring, and that is to improve your functional mobility. So what that means is, and I'm sure you've experienced this, Jake, where you know you train with the guy in the gym, you're lifting weights, and they're just way stronger than you, but then when you guys get on the mat, your for what your strength just translates right. better. Yeah. Okay. So so there's a couple way a couple reasons for that. One is technique and leverage, which is your training I'm sure all the time with your jiu-jitsu and your you know your Muay Thai and all that stuff. But the other thing is this functional mobility, right? So do you have longer ranges of motion that you own? So somebody for example who could lift, you know, deadlift 300 pounds they would be stronger, usually would be stronger on the mat than someone who could deadlift 300 pounds if they had better mobility and connection to longer ranges of motion because now they could express that strength in all the different weird, awkward positions that end up in a fight. Because yeah, obviously that, that goes right into what I was going to bring up with end range strength and isometrics, um, you know, and something that you can – you can definitely improve uh, the generation of force and you don't have to put on a lot of mass to do that. That's very central nervous system based. So, um, you know, if you kind of gear your training a little bit more around what Sal's talking about, but also then adding load to that. So some of these positions, you know, if you can find kettlebells or, you know, something that's a little more versatile in terms of like loading these type of end range of uh, you, you know, uh, in ranges, then you, you, you're going to be able to increase that strength. Oh yeah. Do, do you yeah, have, so like, right. go, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, my question was if you, I, I want to know if you had maps prime pro, cause I feel like that would be the perfect yeah. thing that you could utilize. Yeah. So, um, my, so just to back up for a second, my coach is actually, cause I feel better at this, like, at like walking around like 175 to 180. Like I feel obviously stronger. I feel healthier. Like I get injured less. Um, so my coaches actually wanted me to drop to or go up to one fifty five for my fights. Mm. But that's what I've uh, I've maps. I, I bought that bundle. Was it was anabolic maps prime pro and maps prime, and um, I've been using that because there's only so much time in the day to you know do my skill training, do my strength training, and then obviously and I work as well. I'm in law enforcement, so. Uh, like being able to lift, you know, two, sometimes three times a week has been a lot uh, more beneficial. And I've gained a ton of strength. I'm about to start my second phase now, awesome. uh, this next coming week. Awesome. Yeah. Your, your, your nice. best exercises are deadlifts, presses, rows, and then like windmills, Turkish get-ups. And then I would do maps, prime pro stuff every single day, because like okay. I said, it, you could not gain any strength on your compound lifts, just gain functional mobility and connection to longer ranges of motion and better control. Like Justin said, isometrics, that's your best friend. It really is. I mean, if you can, you know, there's, there's of course explosive strength and strength that you can, you know, uh, apply with lots of force, but then there's the kind of strength that just lasts. You know, if you've ever grappled with yeah. a really good jujitsu guy or Greco guy, and you know, if they get a hold of you, it's like an, an anaconda. Yeah, it's not fun. Yes. So I would do Maps Prime Pro, like just do that often and, uh, and and improve on that. And you don't have to gain any muscle to get stronger uh, in the ring if you get better functional mobility. And the calories oh. uh, to, to support that, you don't have to go, I mean, in this back to kind of comparing this to the bodybuilders, you don't have to eat in that much of a surplus to, to get stronger in these no. areas. It's like, I mean, you're literally yeah. just mm -hmm. a little bit above maintenance. In fact, my goal for you would be to – you know, can I slowly uh, increase calories and not actually put that much weight on the scale? So I'd actually kind of yeah. try and maintain my weight. So long as I'm getting stronger, right? If I if if I'm getting stronger in the gym, um, more than likely you're you're either one you're you're training the isometrics and your and that strength is going up, or you uh, you are building muscle. You know, even just because the scale isn't going up five, ten, fifteen, twenty pounds, doesn't necessarily mean that we we are not getting stronger and we're not building muscle in the gym. Yeah. I unrelated but yeah my wife is uh she just came off a bikini show so that's what she's they do like they're just like slowly adding calories back to into her nutrition nice right now yeah well so i appreciate it guys yeah good deal and you know are you in our forum i don't think so i don't know i might be all right well <laughs> if, if you're not jake we'll, we'll get you in there for free because there's some other 
um, uh, MMA, uh, you know, fighters in there and people that have okay. some experience and it's cool to share experiences and get some insight. So you might get some advice, uh, in the forum that would help. So we'll, we'll get you a free access in there. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Go no kick problem. some ass, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. What a, a challenge, right? Like Justin, you're, you're a football guy and oftentimes mm -hmm. in football, you want size. You want to? Oh, gain. you're always trying to gain. Yeah, you're trying to gain more mass because it's um, it's very it, it's very much like how much ground can you acquire. And so you know, mass is beneficial in that arena, but uh, in wrestling and MMA, you know, these weight cuts are really challenging because you lose that weight and then you're trying to gain it back. You know, after your weigh-ins, and you just feel fatigued and weak. Yeah, I, have you guys ever? Well, I don't, Adam, because of your shows. You've had to cut real lean and come down. I mean, are you like you're probably your weakest? Oh yeah, the day no. of the show. No, I mean they call them they call them walking dead men at that point, yeah. right? So, but I mean this it's this is common, man. This is really com this, and I I think we fell into this even as uh, just young lifters. This idea of like you have to put on this a bunch of mass in order to add a few pounds of muscle, and you you really do not have to. And he's gonna feel better the closer he can stay to his fighting weight totally. as possible. So, yeah. you know, that's way more athletic. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, but it, I get it though, because it can get in your head. Like, I mean, if you, if you fight at a 145 or 150 and you're only 160, you probably feel like, Oh my God, I'm not putting on very much, yeah. but honestly, you're probably going to perform a lot better when you go in there because it's not that dramatic of a cut versus someone who's mm -hmm. got to go 20, 30 pounds down. You're just exhausted after yeah, that. Yeah. Cause the theory is yeah. you, you, you walk around heavy, then you hit the mat or the ring and you're you're a bigger, small guy, right? So now you're stronger. But sometimes it doesn't work that way because you cut so much weight, you actually show up to the fight and you feel like garbage. I, you know, one of my cousins was a, a wrestler mm -hmm. and his coach kept having him cut so much and he, and he would feel dizzy and tired. And I'm like, dude, wrestle at a higher weight. And he says, no, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be weaker at a higher weight because everyone's going to be bigger. I said, no, you won't. I said, you're weaker now. And he did. He actually competed at a higher weight and he's like, bro, night and day. I feel so much better. They're yeah, and I get it because the coaches want him to win and have the best, you know, chance uh, at maybe going at a lower weight class. But you know, your your natural fit a lot of times you're you're kind of fighting your body just to get you know down in that low of a weight. You know, there there is a there is a massive individual variance here too, and that you have to kind of know your body type because there are some people. Um, you know, I had an ex that was like this where. I mean, she could dramatically cut calories and, and cut a ton of weight. <laughs> and just and her, keep muscle. And keep muscle. Yeah. And her body just, and you and I were just talking about this uh, after having COVID and stuff like that. It's like, man, I, I have the body type where, uh, you know, I lost 10 pounds and guarantee six of it was muscle. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That's just my body type. Now, yeah. there's I have pluses too. My body will respond and add really quick. And so, you know, I it's... It's not all negative because that happens, but you 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 do want to know your body type. You may not be the type, or you might have a of someone who's in your fight camp or a, a one of your companions that they are able to drop thirty pounds and hang on to all yeah. their muscle. And you can't compare uh, them to you because that's where the genetic variance is. Even if they have similar diets, similar routines, but yet when they cut, they hang on to all their muscle mass. You're the type that maybe loses a significant amount when you dramatically cut like that. 